<sighs> okay. Um, I hope I don't. I really hope I don't have to make a habit out of doing of uh, doing this, where I get pissed off about something that I see in a wrestling show, and then you know go on a rant about it, and then having to make another video explaining all the reasons behind my diatribe. Um, in the future, I'm going to try to be a little more calm and rational about those types of things. But anyway, I wanted to clear something up. Uh, I said in my last video that I might feel differently about the February 28th edition of Impact um, after I cooled down a little bit, and to a certain extent I do. A certain extent. Um, I watched the replay on Saturday night and actually felt a little bit better about the show after it was over. And uh, I know I said uh, a lot of harsh things about the ladder match uh, that took place in that show. After I, calmed, after I calmed down, I went back and I watched the video I made about it, and I realized that it wasn't. I didn't make it entirely clear that I had no ill will toward either of the wrestlers who participated in that match. I have all the respect in the world for those two guys. I think James Storm and Eric Young are two of the best young talents in the business today, especially James Storm. Um, and I, I didn't have any problems with the work in that match. The work rate was fine while it lasted. Um, I, 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 and I think they did the best they could with what they had. Uh, unfortunately, they were in a no-win situation where they pretty much had to make something out of nothing, and that was not their fault. Um, so I think I owe both those guys an apology, because, you know, the fact is, you could put the best two wrestlers or high flyers in the entire universe in a ladder match, but if they only have five minutes to work with, it's not going to be anything to write home about. Because I mean, there's, there's only so much you can do with that short amount of time, especially when one of the guys in the story is afraid of heights. Um, also, I think uh, my anger about the way that match was treated sort of blinded me a little bit uh, to the beginning of that segment. Uh, something I forgot to, me I didn't mention um, in, my, in my, my review of that of Impact was that uh, James Storm could have a really great promo before uh, that match about uh, how he's not afraid of heights, but you could see he was just covering and he was tense as hell about uh, the Elevation X match. Very strong piece of mic work right there. Uh, J James Storm is... Uh, probably one of the most underrated promo guys that TNA has. You know, a lot of people don't realize how good of a talker he really is because he doesn't get the chance to cut promos that often, aside from you know little backstage skits and whatnot. And I'd love to see him get more opportunities in the mic because I think with the right um, material to work with, he could easily be one of the best interviews in the company. Um, my absolute disdain for the latter match that took place after that promo was 100% directed at the creative team. Not the wrestlers, but the creative team for the, for the half-assed way in which they booked that match in the first place. And I respect those people too, but in my opinion, they were the ones who screwed up last week. Not James Storm and not Eric Young. Ultimately, uh, my problem uh, with this latter match was that it was clearly done as both a completely haphazard and ill-thought-out way of demonstrating James Storm's newfound fear of heights and as a pretty cheap ratings ploy because I, mean, I guess maybe the writers thought that more people would tune in if they put a ladder match on the show. And guess what? They didn't. You know, in, in fact, the ladder match segment and the main event with Kevin Nash in it was, you know, were the, the two lowest-rated segments of the whole show. And if nothing else, this has got to prove to TNA that their current you know, thought process when it comes to booking impact and, and pay-per-views needs to change. I mean, and clearly someone in the writer's room is, you know, a firm believer that random gimmick matches are going to raise viewership and that Kevin Nash is still a draw, but that's wrong, you guys. I'm telling you, it's wrong. I mean, you, you don't even have to believe me. I mean, all you have to do is look at the ratings because the numbers don't lie. You know, Kevin Nash and the ladder match cause viewers to tune out, not in. You know, these things are not ratings draws. Right now, the only thing on Impact that has been a proven ratings draw week after week is the women's division. You know, for a while now, the general trend for Impact is that the rating starts out pretty strongly, but then it, you know, drops throughout the show. And this is obviously a sign of something about the way the show is currently being booked is just not working, and they need to realize that. There's always, you know, there's always a spike for the women's segments, but the bottom line seems to be that people will tune in for Impact, but then something's causing them to turn the show off, and then you know they'll come back for the women, they'll come back for the Knockouts division, but not much of anything else. Therein lies the solution, I think. The writers need to change their booking philosophy. They need to take a good long look at the women's division about what's working about it, and then try to understand and appreciate what's making it so popular with the fans. Then in turn apply that same 
philosophy to the rest of the show. You know, and it, it shouldn't be that difficult either because it's, pre it's pretty simple from where I'm sitting, at least. Um, the booking of the TNA Women's Division is very, very similar to the way that the X Division used to be booked before the current creative regime took over. Um, you know, there isn't tons of outside interference and referee incompetence and redundant comedy skits and all that stuff. The focus is on the wrestling, about the athletic competition, about, you know, finding out who's the best wrestler and whatnot. You know, they, they do have storylines, but they're very minimalistic. You know, they're not so excessive that they overshadow everything that happens in the ring. The storylines are a backdrop to the matches, whereas on the rest of the show, it's becoming the exact opposite. And I think that's why people are tuning out throughout the show because they're getting tired of seeing that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying don't have storylines. Storylines are very important. Do not get me wrong about that. But the Knockouts division has clearly proven that when it comes to storylines, a little can go a very long way. Um, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need so much of that other stuff. You don't need to have ten run-ins in every match. You don't need to have a ref bump every five minutes. You don't need to put all the focus on the stuff that's happening outside the ring when there's a match happening and a story being told inside the ring. And you know who all this goes back to, don't you? The man who has been... Uh, report, who it's been reported that is writing about 90% of impact these days, one Vince Russo. Now let's talk about Vinnie Roof for a minute, okay? Here is a guy who's written some of the most famous and infamous angles in pro wrestling history. He wrote, you know, the Austin McMahon feud, which was awesome. He also wrote some stuff that was appalling. Uh, you know, boss man cooks up Al Snow's dog and tricks him into eating it, etc. <laughs> I mean, he came to, when he came to WCW the first time, uh, he wrote the reformation of the NWO, which was great. And yeah, that angle totally fell apart later on. But the story leading up to and including the reformation of the group was, was, just, was, was brilliant. Russo also claimed that the greatest angle that he would ever write, in fact, the greatest angle in the history of pro wrestling, his words, not mine, was going to be Russo knocks up Ric Flair's son's girlfriend, who would then turn out to be Ric Flair's long lost daughter, Stacy Keebler. Uh, so without a doubt, this guy's ideas have been all over the map for the longest time. I mean, he has great ideas, he has terrible ideas, and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of middle ground for some reason. Now, supposedly, the way the current booking regime works is that Jeff Jarrett comes up with the matches and the feuds that he wants to see, and then he gives Russo the job of coming up with the angles and storylines for them, which leaves um, the women's division to be booked mainly by Dutch Mantel, I, I believe. So Russo is primarily responsible for the current TNA product. Not, not totally responsible, but primarily responsible, and you can take that whichever way you want. Now, I'm not saying get rid of the guy, because he's proven in the past that he's capable of coming up with great ideas. What he seems to be lacking, however, is, is the critical eye that he needs to weed out the good ideas from the bad ones, and then the sensibility to execute those good ideas properly. Because he's written a lot of angles in TNA where, you know, the idea itself was sound, but the story itself could have been so much better if it had just been executed with a little more finesse. What I'm saying here is that Russo can be a great asset to TNA on the condition that he's kept within a controlled environment. Basically, he needs an editor first and foremost, because Russo, Russo is and always has been an entertainment guy. He's not a wrestling guy. He's an entertainment guy. He needs someone who knows and understands wrestling to stand over his shoulder and say, that's a good idea, but that one, that's a bad idea. Change it. And Jeff Jarrett, I don't, I don't think Jeff Jarrett is, is the guy to do this, because if he were, we wouldn't have been getting a lot of the, the questionable stuff that we've been seeing on Impact for a while now. You know, he, Russo needs a good editor, or failing that, you know, another idea, idea would be to just, you know, relegate Russo to brainstorming and storyline stuff, and then have somebody else come in and book the actual matches involved with them. So, anyway, long story short, I apologize for the, to the wrestlers for my heart, my, uh, the harshness in my review of that latter match. I meant no disrespect to the wrestlers, just the match and the people who booked it, and uh, also... Use the women's division as a model for changing the current booking strategy on impact and pay-per-views and give Russo an editor who understands wrestling. That's all I got for now. See you next time.